everyone. Today we're going to talk about the Horner XL4 numbering systems and addressing. And in the this all-in-one controller, the data is stored in different types of locations called registers. You can also call them words, and they're made up of 16 bits each. And multiple registers can be put together and store a 32-bit value, which is really a double word. So we also have the HMI on the XL4, so that we have some special registers just to deal with the screens and how they get presented in the PLC. So the um, the first thing we need to do is take a look at how the uh, numbering systems um, work in there. And in order to do so, what we'll do is we'll call up the manual. And on the manual, what we have here is uh, just the 16 different uh, bits make up the register. And throughout the, um, the manual, they'll call it a word or register, um, which means the same thing. And what you'll notice is that the nomenclature or the way the, um, the registers are organized is that we have this symbol, which is the percentage sign. And then we get the controller type in this case AI which is the analog input and then we'll have a number which is actually called the offset which is actually the address in which we want to get that register or word. Right? So it's percentage which is the data type it's the or it's required character I should say the percentage sign and we have the AI which is the required register type and then we have the um, actual word that we can get it and this first one here is this analog input in analog inputs um, they're 16-bit, they are non-memory attentive, and we have 512 analog inputs. Then we have analog outputs, which is 8Q, and they're again 16-bit registers, non-memory attentive, and these are all local, these two are local I.O. to the actual controller itself. Then what we have is the uh, um, AIG which is the analog input global. And these are 16-bit registers, again, analog coming from the network. And we have 32 of these analog uh, inputs per node, per ID. Then we have analog out, AQ, uh, or AQG, which is the analog global output, again, coming from the network. And again, we have 32 per, per ID. An ID meaning the controller itself. Then we have, in order to deal with the display, we have uh, the display bit, and it is one bit long. It's non-memory attentive, and it will, um, it's a digital output flag that will display the corresponding screen. And we have 1,023 of these bits, so again, in this controller, uh, we can have that many screens. Then we have the digital I or inputs, and the digital inputs um, are discrete inputs. They're for local, and they will actually um, be things like your sensors and, and things hooked up to your um, your controller itself. And they're one bit long. Again, we can have 2,048 of these inputs. Then we have global input bits, which is the IG. And again, global digital inputs. They're again one bit long and um, they can come from the network and we can have up to 64 of these per, per ID. The uh, key bit is a single bit flag used for the programmer and you can get those the, on the front of the unit. We have the function keys. We can actually get the status of those keys by using this bit. And there's actually five of them um, in the controller itself. So again, if we look back on the, the picture here, we see the five bits or the five uh, uh, function keys there. And again, that corresponds directly to those key bits. Then we have the uh, M retentive bits. And those uh, M bits are um, a single bit long, they are memory attentive, and we have 16,000 of those uh, bits for us to use in our program. Then we have our digital outputs, 
and those digital outputs again memory retentive or sorry non-memory retentive and they're local to the controller we have 2048 next we have the global digital outputs all right so again they're single bits they can go up onto the network and we have 64 per id then we have the general purpose registers and the general purpose registers um, they are uh, retentive registers and we can have 49,999 of these general purpose registers to use in our program as we will um, then what we get into is after that we have uh, system uh, bits and these are used in the system there's 13 of them and they're used for special purposes and we'll just go to that in a second here we also have system registers SRs and again they get information to us uh, as we need then we have temporary bits and the temporary bits are not memory attentive uh, they're single bits and we can use them throughout the program so looking back at our at our system bits this is the table for the system bits so S1 indicates the first scan S2 uh, our network uh, S3 is our time base it's just a pulsing flag we have always on flags always off the IO is okay so it's actually an internal check for the IO uh, Ethernet COM ports so there's lots of information here that we can pick up and look for the SR registers again we have some information that we can use within our, our program um, we have middle minimum scan rates we have maximum scan rates average scan rates that we can pick up uh, alarm current alarm screen numbers current user screen numbers that we we have right now so lots of information within these units and so if we look at our um, data sheet that comes with our XL4 our model is actually a model too so we have 12 DC in we have six really out we have four high-speed uh, uh, counter in and we have four uh, analog in so keeping that in mind when we go back to our, our manual or our manual here and our addresses if we go back up and we look at say just our digital in we said we had our, our discrete inputs our input registers digital inputs uh, is our percent I and that would be uh, 1 to 12 and they are assigned within the uh, software so if we call up our software and a couple interesting things with our software um, what we can do is we'll add a new row here we're online to control right now and we'll stick it right here we'll double click it and we can write the uh, percent and the address but if we're unsure what we do is we can leave eliminate the uh, percent uh, symbol and we can just put I with a question mark it will automatically assign as you can see here the first output if we do it again and we do I with a question mark it will automatically assign the next available uh, input that we have and this is, this is the same thing with outputs and any memory area within the XL4. Okay. And it really doesn't matter if we put I, um, I1 and the number or another way we can do it is if we want the uh, third one we can actually put 3I and again it will actually put it uh, accept that as a valid input point or output point or memory address so we can do the in the seascape it allows a little bit of, little bit of flexibility it knows exactly what we've already used and what we can use and so using a question mark actually brings up um, the next available one so if we look at our, our uh, website if you go over and you can download all the manuals that you see here from this website here all the links will be at the uh, end of this video and on our our uh, website at accautomation.ca and in here what you'll do is go over to documentation and 
There you get the opportunity to download your user manual, the specification, ship, uh, specification sheets, the brochures, etc. for the Excel 4. Also on our website we have a couple of previous posts, what everyone ought to know about uh, PLC programming logic numbering systems um, and that gives a lot of inf useful information. Alright, that's it for today. And if this um, video has been helpful, please give us a thumbs up so other people can um, find this information. Also, subscribe to our channel. That would be great. Our website is accautomation.ca. And if you go over to that site, and what you'll see is if you, we scroll right down to the bottom, right, or near the bottom, we can actually subscribe right here. And by subscribing there, or at the very bottom of the page, what you'll find is that uh, we will allow you to um, uh, join, subscribe to our channel, so you will get the latest update for anything that we um, build. Also, you get two links, Understanding PLC Numbering Systems, which is an ebook that will help you with exactly what we're talking about today. Also, robust, robust data logging for free. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for listening and watching.